Welcome, and uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Michael Sharatsky, and I'm going to be your host for this session. Today's session, EAP Drive, EAPM, Drive Down Your IT Costs, will be presented by Philip Hawk, our Application Strategy Leader, and Magnus Hoyman, Chief Sales Officer for Scandinavia. We highly recommend that you call into this webinar from your mobile using local numbers provided. For best experience, please also close all, uh, all your other applications for the duration of this webinar. This webinar will take approximately 45 minutes, including a short Q&A session at the end. Since everyone on this call has been muted, please type your questions into your GoToWebinar control panel and we will bring them up during the Q&A session. Now, without further ado, I will hand over to our presenters. So, oh, good morning, everybody. My name is Magnus Heumann, uh, as you see me on the screen. Uh, I'm not with you on the webcam due to some bandwidth issues, but uh, Hopefully, be with you on voice during this whole meeting. Uh, with me today is also Philip Rock, and I let you introduce yourself very briefly, Philip. Good morning, Philip Rock. Uh, I'm the application strategy leader in Capgemini and leading EAPM, which I'm going to present in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, just before we go into uh, the content of this webinar, uh, just introduce a little bit background of the APM and why we're here in this meeting. If you can go to the next slide, please. Okay. So uh, overall, the impact of of uh, the situation that we have right now with COVID and everything is of course very uh, tough for us, both from a personal level as well as, as well as from a business level. I'm sure it is for you as it is for us. There are sectors, of course, which is heavily impacted, uh, travel and transportation, hospitality sectors, but there is also others in manufacturing and, and uh, non-food retail companies that are closing down and uh, losing a lot of turnover. When you lose a lot of turnover and you also see GDP declining and, and uh, growth, growth will take some time before it comes back, we need to start to look at cost. And the cost reduction is something we talk a lot with our clients around today. Uh, there is always a need for for us to be more efficient and, and uh, use the means that we have in the best possible way. But uh, of course, we need to understand what gives most bang for the buck. Some of the questions that this uh, webinar hopefully will will answer is, for example, uh, how do we uh, create rapid sustainable savings? How can we align IT spend to new business priorities? How can IT enable increased business agility? How can we maximize our variable cost? So uh, in order to do this, uh, which is not easy, we think from our perspective that it's very important to be transparent and take fact-based decisions. So without further ado, I leave the word to Philip. Thank you, uh, Magnus. Uh, so we're going to go through uh, EAPM to understand what it is. Uh, and uh, I will make a live demo to make it even more tangible. And we'll go through a few case studies, European case studies, where it has been used. And then we'll explain how, what's the next step, how we usually start the journey. And then we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, let's start with uh, what EAPM is. It's a decision-making platform. It has been uh, created 10 years ago, and we are uh, a dedicated team within Capgemini working on it. And it's now a mature offering recognized by Gartner, Forrester, ISG. Uh, we have uh, accumulated data from our experience, and we have constituted a solid benchmark database. We have 7 million dat data points in our uh, database. And you'll see it's a holistic approach which can uh, analyze the full IT ecosystem. It's a multi-dimensions approach. 
So we address uh, scanning the portfolio, the financial dimension, the application dimension, the infrastructure, the operating model, and the move to the cloud. It's a, it's a, it's a platform which is leveraging uh, AI techniques and also uh, analytics techniques and data visualization. Uh, let's uh, jump directly now into the demo just to make it, uh, to illustrate uh, what I'm saying. So I hope you can see uh, on your screen that kind of brain made of bubbles. Each bubble here is an application. In the pop-up, you can see the name of the application and some key characteristics. So when we uh, start the APM, we first uh, collect data. So the idea is to describe the IT ecosystem first leveraging existing repositories, such as uh, CMDB, such as uh, uh, APM tool, Excel file, ticketing tool, uh, whatever. We are fully agnostic from the source of data. Uh, and when we collect the data, we describe the application portfolio first. So uh, you see here 305 applications we can play with some attributes to see those applications. So here I have selected the business criticality and you can see uh, different intensities of red. So darker is the bubble, more uh, critical it is for the business. You see here five level, but we could have three, two, uh, so we can configure everything. We can also represent some uh, size. Uh, for instance, if I have a ticketing tool, I can size now the bubble by the number of tickets. And now I see the main contributors to the number of tickets in my uh, landscape. So this application has, is generating 22 problems per year on average, and this one you see uh, 70, more than 1,700. So the, the, the tool can be seen as an aggregator. So we're going to build a 360 view of the landscape, aggregating, integrating multiple dimensions. So uh, I can also uh, see the uh, FTEs, for instance, the, the, the workload, so the effort spent on the portfolio. So you see here on this application, we have 16 FTEs, so IT people working on this application to maintain this application. So we have multiple axes. So the first axis is the financial axis. So we need to understand what, where goes the money, where uh, uh, you are spending the money. So uh, we can uh, transform those FTEs into uh, costs. And now I can see uh, uh, the money. So it could be crown, it could be euro, it could be dollar. Uh, so here, uh, 1.3 million euros are spent on this application uh, when only uh, 366 here are spent on this one. Uh, so here you see the, the, the big apps where you spend the money. Uh, this money can be seen uh, across the, the uh, organization. So, uh, and first, sorry, uh, we can uh, split the money per. Um, uh, items so we can see the hardware cost we can see the license cost and we can see the overall tco here so now i can see uh, the, the, the the per application the budget the, the spendings per application so when we collect the data we uh, create this baseline you see here 38 million euros so I can see that I'm spending 38 million euros on that landscape. And this is the starting point. So we know where the money is going uh, as the first step. This is the result of the, uh, let's say, the data collection. And then I'm going to see how I can optimize those spending. So I have multiple dimensions uh, to do that. Let's start with the rationalization of, your, of the application. So for that, we are leveraging the Gartner approach, which is uh, the time methodology. Uh, clicking on that uh, button, uh, I can uh, create what we call a, a tree map here, which is a static view. It's no more uh, bubbles, but squares, but it's the same uh, 
the peak, uh, we can extract the tree map from the tool. So uh, it's a good visual because we can use it in a PowerPoint or any kind of uh, Word or whatever. So here I have distributed my application across multiple uh, destinies. Uh, so you see here eliminate destinies. So you will find in this uh, bucket all the apps which could be decommissioned without any replacement. So the second bucket is invest you'll find here applications which have good technical and functional foundations, but maybe you could spend more. So you see here the surface is uh, representing the, the budget and they are small compared to the other. The color is representing the criticality again. Huh? So uh, behind each uh, category, behind, behind each destiny, we have a logic and we share the logic together. So it's based on the attributes of the application. So in the eliminate category, you will find low critical apps with a low number of users, um, old apps maybe. So we we will have a combination of criteria we share together and for you to understand this outcome. So it's a cool construction. At the end of the day, you understand uh, this uh, map. So what's the next step? Uh, let's consider the, the uh, eliminate candidate only and I remove from the screen the other, I can see in my organization who is managing those applications, so which domain is in charge of these apps. And now I can see each IT domain, so the, the column, the head of the column is uh, representing the IT domain uh, owner. And I can see uh, now, I can, sorry, start a conversation with them why don't we do, why don't you decommission these applications, low critical apps, low number of users? So they say, they will say yes, but I need to talk to my business. Let's call up now by the business owner. The next step will be a joint meeting between IT and business, uh, explaining the opportunity for decommissioning and uh, best case, uh, taking the decision for that. So you see EAPM is there to prepare the ground for the decision. But at the, end of, at the end of the day, no magic. You take the decision and you take commission. So this is uh, how we uh, work on the uh, uh, apps uh, rationalization. And I have not been through uh, all the, the categories, but uh, I could have gone through a free challenge cost, uh, replace or improve. So uh, you have your uh, roadmap, I would say, uh, after this exercise on the application portfolio. But you, you may also find uh, opportunities, uh, optimizations uh, in the uh, infrastructure side. So how we do that? We, uh, uh, I was mentioning uh, starting the speech, uh, the, uh, uh, the CMDB which is uh, the description of your of the uh, infrastructure. So let's uh, take a small uh, subset of my portfolio here just to limit the number of information. Uh, and I will focus on the uh, CMDB view. So now you, you should see uh, in the middle uh, the red bubbles which are representing the application and uh, the peripherals object are representing the servers. I, so I can see each single server with its IP address. Uh, and on the left here, this row here is, uh, is the structure of the CMDB. When we upload it, we interpret the structure of the CMDB. You know, it's not normalized, it's never perfect, but uh, at least it contains some information. So we can now highlight uh, this item, which is the data centers. So now I can see, uh, where are my servers? So in which data centers are my servers? I can also uh, highlight uh, on which environment, on which OS, on which version of OS. So more I'm selecting the, the item, more my visual is starting to be uh, not visible at all. So I will switch into a static view. Uh, and this static view uh, is made of bars. So now you see each bar is one of the items I have highlighted. So you have the application bar, you have the data center bar, the environment, so I can understand my CMDB. And uh, 
the uh, axis here for optimizations will be, uh, for instance, first the data center. So you see multiple data centers. So maybe I will find some small data centers with less than 50 servers, and I could uh, uh, start to work on uh, data center consolidation. I will also challenge the environment, so the ratio of production server versus non-production server. Maybe uh, I have too much non-production server. I may also uh, work on the technical depth, so the version of OS. I may also work on the technical dispersion, so too many uh, versions, too many uh, OS, different OS. So here, um, just leveraging the CMDB, uh, it opened the door to uh, multiple uh, performance levels uh, to uh, optimize the CMDB. Now let's move to the uh, other topic, which is the operating model. So I was presenting, starting the demo, uh, the uh, FTEs. So these uh, people which are working on the portfolio uh, can dis be described in terms of geography. So I can see where they are, in which country are the teams, are they in low cost regions, are you leveraging offshore, uh, where are the volume of people, where are the skills, how I'm leveraging the critical mass of people. Uh, so um, I can also, uh, going back to the portfolio, splitting it per IT domain and coloring it per um, provider. So if I have multiple providers in my landscape, I can see my sourcing. And now you can see each head of a column is an IT domain. Each color is a provider. And I can see the yellow provider where it is. <coughs> uh, I can see where is the green one. <coughs> Sorry. And I can see uh, the overall uh, sourcing. So here you understand with all this information, I can challenge uh, the uh, offshore ratio. I can challenge how I'm creating synergies, how I'm, I'm mutualizing people, expertise, skills, and where. I can challenge the outsourcing ratio. I can challenge the sourcing. So all those uh, axes are uh, potential uh, performance levels on the operating model, on the way you work on your portfolio. And let's move to the last topic, which is the move to the cloud. So how we are uh, helping in the decision making to move to the cloud, which is a complex decision. We are providing the tool, uh, what we call decision trees, which is a logic you can configure with the EAPM. Uh, and each form, the blue forms here are if then else condition. And if you comply with the condition, you go to the yes branch. If you don't comply, you go to the no branch, and then you go to the next test. So with this approach, you can build your own uh, algorithm, your own logic to sort your application. And here uh, it's a demo uh, decision tree, uh, cloud oriented, cloud eligibility oriented. I will uh, look for blockers first. And if my apps have uh, sensitivity, data sensitivity or security issues, they will fall into this basket, which is the on-prem basket, so not eligible for cloud. If they don't have blockers, I will be able to move to the, the other step, so potentially public or private cloud as a target. And if I have more attributes, I will be able to determine the path to the cloud. So it could be path, could be yes. So depending on their uh, characteristics, again. So with this uh, tool, uh, we can build one logic at portfolio level and uh, apply this logic globally on the portfolio, making sure everyone is uh, following the same uh, approach, moving to the cloud. And once I've, I've, I've done the logic, I can run it on my portfolio. So now I can see the bubbles. So each application uh, following his own uh, path on the decision tree and falling into the corresponding basket. So if I stop here the, 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 the flow, I can 
click on this application and I can see, you see the red line, where it will go. So this one will be a, a, a private IaaS candidate, for instance, based on the logic uh, I have uh, set up. So I can uh, now uh, go full speed just to accelerate the execution of the algorithm. And I will focus on, uh, sorry, I will focus only on one out outcome, which is the public path candidate. So this is, uh, this is it. So uh, uh, now all my apps have been uh, tested. And uh, at the end of the day, I have eight apps which are eligible for public path. So I just click on my line here. I go back to my three maps. I can see and coloring the apps per the criticality. Now I can see who is managing those applications. So the IT uh, domain in charge of those apps, which are eligible for public path. I can see who is managing those applications. Uh, sorry, sorry, I can see who is using those applications. So now the business owner. And now you are familiar with the next step joint meeting between IT and business. We can explain why it's this target public path uh, can be achieved and explain also the interest for the business. It could open the door for a new way of working, uh, agile, etc. So the business can understand and be embarked into the transformation. So you see here again, EAPM is good to build the logic is good also to share the outcome and embark the people in the next step and embarking the people is a key success factor to make the transformation uh, a success so i will stop here uh, the demo at least and uh, i will switch back to the to the slides uh, and uh, just to share with you some uh, references uh, we have uh, with the apm so the first reference is a car manufacturer uh, looking for savings. Uh, the, it was a burning platform for him. Um, and uh, big, uh, big number of uh, applications uh, uh, and FTEs on the landscape. So more than 600 applications, 600 FTEs. We have worked on uh, all those axes. Uh, grabbing all the data which were available and completing the data with some manual entry. Um, and we have uh, enriched the rationalization opportunities. We have proposed uh, some adjustment on the operating model uh, and uh, calculate, we have calculated the potential savings. So here, uh, the outcome of the EPM is a business case and it's made in co-construction with you. So you understand all the metrics, you understand all the numbers, all the assumptions, all the scenarios, of course. The second uh, reference is uh, in NL. Uh, the two main hospitals uh, were about to, to merge. Uh, so with uh, 2,000 applications. Uh, so we have worked on those two portfolios, uh, scanning the IT ecosystem of those two uh, uh, big organizations, and we have uh, identified 30% uh, saving uh, to, uh, uh, to leveraging the merge uh, momentum, I would say, uh, and identifying uh, redundancies and uh, consolidation uh, candidates uh, in the portfolio uh, itself from apps to infra, of course. And the last uh, reference is uh, uh, in the retail sector. Uh, here, uh, we have analyzed uh, a large portfolio of 1,600 applications. Um, and for that, we have uh, worked on end-to-end uh, -end vision and uh, consolidating both the apps view and the infra view, making sure the application leaders could understand uh, their, the impact of their decision, both on apps and infra, which was lost, I would say, in that uh, current situation. Uh, it was um, each layer, apps and infra, were managed by different organizations. So with no links and no, uh, I would say, uh, global visions 
so we had to rebuild this global vision. And here again, we have worked on uh, optimizations and found uh, an, an achievable action plan. So it's an actionable action plan. So you understand, in each case, we integrate the constraints uh, you have, the constraints of the sector. Uh, so the outcome is actionable. It's your plan uh, and uh, you own it at the end of the day. The, the EAPM uh, approach lasts uh, eight weeks. It's run in project mode. You can uh, have it uh, one shot. And if you want to use uh, EAPM Studio, the tool, uh, we can train you and you can use it uh, over, uh, over time. So how, what's the best way uh, to start uh, EAPM and to start the journey? Uh, what we propose is uh, a free phase, uh, two weeks, uh, what we call uh, discovery. Uh, so discovery phase, so it's a two weeks approach. Uh, what do we do? So we uh, use the data you have. So no effort on your side, uh, except providing an extract of the data you have. So a flat file. <clears throat> so it could come from multiple repositories. So what we do, we <clears throat> upload the data into EAPM. It goes very fast. Huh? So we have uh, feeders or ETL-like tools. Uh, so we map the source and the destination data point, and we upload the data into our database. Um, once we have done that, we analyze the data. So we analyze the data uh, in terms of quality of data, in terms of completeness, but also uh, what they say. The first interpretation of what they say. And usually when we run this phase, we come out with uh, uh, first list of rationalization opportunity, so application, rationalization, decommissioning. Uh, we come out with the first draft of, of decision tree, cloud eligibility uh, decision tree. Uh, we come out with the first um, trends, I would say, uh, regarding the operating model and also risk analysis, so vulnerability points. So, uh, the, at the end of those two weeks, uh, we will share this outcome with you through a, a workshop, a meeting, uh, and then you'll be uh, free, I would say, to uh, go further or to stop uh, this uh, approach. But uh, we wanted to make it rapid and simple. Okay, to just to, we are more there to solve problems than to uh, add more problems that we all have today. So this is it uh, for me, uh, Magnus, if you want to take over. Yes, thank you, Philippe. And uh, uh, at the end of this slide, uh, you see that you can contact myself uh, if you have any any questions or if you want to run this kind of discovery. Of course, uh, we also um, uh, have a network of account managers or account executives, which is connected to to uh, many of uh, the uh, clients that uh, Gemini is working with. So you can always contact uh, your account manager as well. Uh, and I think you have Philip's uh, email also in this material. Uh, so, just wanted to say that. All right, uh, I think Michael, you will uh, see if we have some questions from the audience uh, that we could try to answer. That's correct, Magnus. Uh, I got some questions, and we can start with a direct one. What is the cost of the discovery phase? This is uh, one of yeah, the uh, questions that came. Yeah, it's for free. Uh, as I said, uh, we wanted uh, it to make it uh, simple. Uh, it, it's uh, so we will invest, okay? And uh, but have in mind, it's uh, very rapid for us to uh, leverage the data you have. Uh, many things are automated within EAPM, 
And uh, so for us, it will be a few few days of work, but I hope uh, we will be able to uh, show the value. So this is the, the idea, right? to make sure uh, you are at ease with what we propose. You, you can feel the value. You can share it with others to make you know, the decision to go or no go for the eight weeks uh, assessment. Thank you, Philip. Uh, there is uh, one more question that we got from the audience. Uh, is there a minimum size of the companies where this tool is useful? Minimum number of applications also. Is that something that there is? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, so uh, it has an interest to use the APM above 50 applications. I would say below, uh, it's, uh, it's useless. But above, uh, it starts to be interesting. Uh, so, and EPM has been made for large portfolios. So I would say there is no limit at that stage. Uh, the biggest portfolio we have analyzed was uh, made uh, with thousands of apps, 5,000 of apps. But uh, I would say, uh, around 100 applications, uh, it's a good number, above 50. Thank you for that. Uh, we have some more questions, actually. Uh, the next question is, what are the average savings that can be identified during this discovery phase? Yeah. Uh, so when we identify the savings, we first uh, split those savings in, into uh, short-term, mid-term, and long-term savings. Usually, on average, if I look back to what we have done this year, on average, we identified 27% savings, achievable savings. Again, uh, I reinforce the message. Uh, it's not theoretical savings. It's savings you recognize, okay? Savings um, coming from actions you can implement in your uh, environment. So uh, this is the average. But, uh, you know, it's uh, like for the zebra, uh, on average, they are gray. Huh? So uh, we have within a portfolio some areas which are uh, above 50% saving, others which are below 10%, uh, very optimized. So. Uh, it's always, uh, you know, uh, specific, but uh, the uh, I would say the beauty of the ATM is to identify the most fruitful area. So uh, and so you can start uh, to address this area to generate uh, the performance you expect. Thank you. Uh, one more question from the audience. Is the data collection effort a one-off or can you integrate EAPM to allow for automatic updates of the data? Uh, EAPM, uh, we don't have today uh, API. Uh, so EAPM is not directly connected uh, in your, uh, into your IT landscape with other uh, Referentials. Uh, why? Because uh, we could do it. Huh? There is no uh, technical issue. But we, EAPM is thought as a decision making platform. You can upload, you can, sorry, you can update every three months, every six months. You don't need a real time uh, interface with uh, EAPM. It's not a real time dashboard. But you can update it. Um, I think every six months or every year, it depends how dynamic is your portfolio. And then work with the data you have. Uh, on top of it, uh, EPM can uh, uh, archive the data. So you can uh, store into, uh, so you can uh, keep an image of your portfolio when you want and compare two situations. 
So for instance, we'll be able to compare where you, where you were six months ago, where you are today. Uh, and when you have two uh, you know, points, two measurements, you can uh, project where you will be tomorrow if you uh, follow the same, the same trend. So we can, uh, uh, th so the way we have thought in APM, it's more uh, an offline, I would say, a platform. You l upload, you update uh, on periodic basis. Uh, with the referential you have. We are not there to replace your referentials. We are there to leverage the data they contain and uh, create the 360 view and help uh, you to make decisions. And also to monitor uh, the progression of your transformation plan on periodic basis. So, but it's disconnected today from the IT. It's not a new application. Thank you, Philip. Uh, we got a couple more questions as we still have uh, 10 minutes of the webinar. So I can just go on with the next one. Uh, what are the benchmarks used in order to assess and compare us to the best in class? As in, yeah. Yeah. So the bench, very good question. The, the benchmarks. Uh, the, the, uh, so we are not Gartner, we are not ISG, we are not Forrester. So, uh, and you don't expect that from us. Uh, we are kept Gemini. The benchmark we have are built from the last experiences. So as I said, we started 10 years ago. We have scanned as of now 500 application portfolio. Uh, we have 7 million data points, which are representing 13 industry sectors. Uh, so we have uh, multiple size of IT teams also because you cannot compare, you know, a huge portfolio with a small one. So we have now a very um, good diversity in our benchmark. We, for the benchmarking, we keep only uh, data which are younger than uh, 13 months old. Okay, because after it's uh, too old and uh, out of date, I would say. So the new trends are not in it. Uh, and uh, so usually we focus on uh, sectorial benchmark first, but now we have a domain benchmark. So um, for instance, supply chain, HR, things like that. And uh, we also uh, have the best in class, whatever the category is. So uh, again, as I said, benchmarks are average. So, uh, so good to be compared, but it's an average. Uh, and uh, so good to know also where is the best in class within the benchmark. Uh, so, uh, so we have those uh, multiple uh, uh, reference points to, uh, uh, we'd say, uh, increase the level now. Uh, Perfect. Um, so, uh, two more questions if we have time. Uh, how do we lead an a EAPM study? What are the main steps? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Uh, what are the main steps of an EAPM study? Uh, how is it uh, led? Yeah, so it's uh, first uh, the discovery phase, I would say. The first phase is those two weeks, okay? Uh, so, once you confirm your interest. Uh, it's an eight weeks approach. Uh, three steps, preparation, data collection, and uh, analysis. So uh, preparation is two weeks. Uh, we align each other on, I would say, the main uh, metadata, uh, what uh, uh, FT means, what a ticket means, uh, what an application means. So, the, I would say the dictionary, which will enable us to talk the same language on your landscape. Uh, that's the two first weeks, and we will prepare potential uh, complementary uh, data collection. So it could be manual uh, data collection. Uh, if it's the case, we can uh, then launch the data collection. So involving the people who will uh, be part of this that phase. So it's four weeks and then uh, two weeks to finalize 
uh, and build the final report and share the final report with you. Uh, so when I, I present those three phases, uh, it looks like uh, very sequential. It's not the case. It's very iterative. So once we have data, we analyze. Once we, and we share with you the outcome. So you understand uh, very rapidly what they say to us and uh, potentially you can adjust them because you don't recognize yourself. So you can, doing that, doing an iterative process helps us to secure the quality of the data as you see the results very rapidly. Thank you, Philip. And I have a final question uh, here. I don't think, unless some more come in. But uh, what is the guarantee in terms of security and confidentiality of the data used for an EAPM assessment? Yeah. So we, the EAPM uh, solution is a SAS solution. Uh, it's currently used uh, in the banking sector. So uh, just to say, we have been through all the security uh, uh, expectations uh, from that sector, which are uh, quite high. So it's a mature solution. Uh, the data are uh, in our premises, so on our, in our data center, Capgemini data center. And uh, we are, uh, so we are securing it with all our framework, security framework. Uh, so this is for, for the technical uh, answer. We have, uh, when we work together, we have an NDA. So uh, we set up the rules, the confidentiality you want around the data uh, together. And we make sure we apply the rules we uh, describe in the joint NDA. Uh, and uh, additional uh, point, I was right now talking about the SAS uh, version of EAPM. We have another one, which is on-prem. So uh, for, um, you know, different sector or from banks also, uh, we can install EAPM in your prem. Uh, so there is no more uh, external uh, flow outside your prem. So you'll stay with your data. We will uh, uh, use EAPM in your location directly within your network, within your security framework. Uh, the only, uh, I would say, uh, attention point with this version is uh, the benchmarking. So you will not be able to benefit from the benchmark because uh, you know, the data of the benchmark are in our uh, premises. Thank you very much for this, Philip. Uh, these were all the questions that we received. Um, and uh, for any further info regarding EAPM, we advise you to contact Magnus Heyman, Magnus, I'm giving you the final word. Yes, so uh, thank you everybody for joining this uh, webinar today. As we said before, if you have any questions or interest in this, uh, you can contact myself or your key account manager from Capgemini, Society, or even from our newly acquired company, Altram. So hopefully this has been inspiring to you and uh, we hope that you will have a fantastic day and thank you, Philip and Michael, for, for assisting in this webinar. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.